In my time of doing interviews for AFC Wimbledon, I've come across a number of top sportsmen who've been supportive of AFC Wimbledon over the years, England cricketer Mark Wood, IBO super middleweight champion Lerone Richards, and now we've got, of course, as well, athlete Chris McAllister, Great Britain 400 metre hurdler. How did it all come about for you, Chris? Well, yeah, so um, I, I spoke to Robert about coming down. He's kind of been really open about letting me come, come and see training and kind of see what the club's about. And I just gave a, gave a little chat to the players about kind of mindset and kind of the guys have been going through a bit of a tough period. So it's been really good to chat to them and kind of like um, feel, get a feel for the group. And yeah, really nice. What kind of responses did you get from the players? They, they were really interested in kind of my, my, my sport and what I do, kind of the ind individual athlete mindset and stuff like that. And Robbo was um, really keen that I got across to them kind of just how hard I work and like all that stuff. Like I've got a job alongside doing athletics, so it's been really it's been really interesting to kind of hear about perceptions on that and stuff, yeah. I think they were quite surprised to hear about my job. Tell us more about that then, so how you combine the athletics and, and your day job. So I work, I work for the civil service and they're quite flexible with kind of work and stuff but um, usually I work 9 to 5 during the day and then I'm kind of get a, get a good chance to go go to training and kind of run my heart out in the evening. It's not not massively physical job um, so I'm really lucky that I kind of have the energy at the end of the day and kind of couldn't uh, yeah and, they, and their work is super flexible with it as well so it's been really easy to manage actually. Pretty much on six days for you with the training you're saying yeah? That's right yeah so I, I train Monday to Friday and then Saturday mornings so after work every day and then kind of running up hills on a Saturday morning so it's all good fun. Good stuff and the day you had down here today I mean you've even come across uh, England rugby union great Ben Ryan of course yeah. who did so well with Fiji in, in the past with the sevens at the yeah, Olympics. Yeah. Tell us about your day here. It's really good to meet Ben who's been uh, working with the team uh, as well but yeah kind of um, Olympic gold medal winning coach uh, it's not something I really expected but also kind of um, being in and around the group, seeing how they train, the intensity that they work at is incredible and kind of just uh, yeah, feeding off the positive energy uh, in the group and Robbo, um, they all speak so highly of him, so it's been really good to hear about that. So let's talk a little bit about your, your Wimbledon heritage if you like, yeah. how does that go back in terms of the family and yourself with Wimbledon? So my, my, my dad's from New Zealand, he came over in 86 just as Wimbledon were kind of on the rise, went to the FA Cup final and kind of it all just kind of went from there really. Went to a few uh, Wimbledon games at Selhurst Park while I was in the womb, and then uh, when the club reformed in 2002, I was kind of just down the down the stadium for I think my first game in person was like a Newport in the Conference South or something like that. So I kind of still remember it. And uh, yeah, two playoff finals later, here I am uh, at the AC Wimbledon training ground. So you've been pretty, in it for quite a journey. Pretty much the long haul, yeah. Tell us about the playoff finals about those. I went up on a coach with the team, uh, with uh, not with the team, with the uh, with the supporters uh, to Manchester, obviously for Luton. Uh, won on penalties with Seb Brown saving it. I can remember it. Got my dad's old Wimbledon scarf in a couple of photos as well, which is really awesome. Uh, and then obviously had to go over to see uh, us beat Plymouth in the in the playoff final at Wembley, which is both great memories. So they're probably your top games. What about top players for Wimbledon over the years? Who do you really appreciate? I remember. Uh, I remember John Main being the striker when I was first there. He was kind of banging in 30 goals a season and stuff like that. But over the years, kind of love uh, Sammy Moore, kind of a great like, aggressive midfielder, obviously. Um, right now, Ayub and Jack are just on a different level. And I've just seen them up close in training. And the way they strike the ball and kind of movement around the, around the pitch is fantastic. So. But also the speed as well. I mean, the likes of Ayub Vassal and Dapo Mabude as well, yeah, particularly yeah, yeah. your profession. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I can see the way they move. They could make great sprinters, definitely. What kind of football do you, do you yourself? Did you play any particular position? Uh, I was left back, but did a lot of running up and down the wing as well. Um, not particularly technically good, but um, lots of yeah, um, lots of running. I was kind of I kind of read the game fairly well, but could never really strike a ball that great. So I kind of <laughs> I was more of a cricketer actually, but okay. loved my football. But you, so you got into athletics though, that was your, your main main love though, yeah? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I really wanted to push something as hard as I could and kind of join my coach when I was 17. Um, won English schools a year later and it got such a buzz off it that I just could never go back to anything else. And your PB, just over 49 seconds? Yeah, 49.1, so um, current GB number one, so that's really cool. But I um, want to push it on to the next level this year with um, Commonwealths and World Championships as well as Europeans. 
and this year to focus on. So really good opportunity for me to make my mark on the international stage. Absolutely, because I mean you've done the World Championships before, once before, yeah? Yeah, I went to Doha in 2019 and I've done a, a couple of other GB events as well, so uh, it's been really cool. And as I said at the start of the interview, I mean we've, we've spoken in the past to the likes of Mark Wood and Lorraine Richards who've, who've got so much support for AFC Wimbledon as well, but I think it's my mind goes back to when we had Steve Seddon here and his brother Zach Seddon, who's a, he's a big West Ham fan, but he followed us at the time. Any, anyone else you can sort of trigger the memory of who supports Wimbledon, perhaps in the athletics fraternity? I don't think so. I think obviously um, everybody knows of the story and they're kind of everybody's second favourite team, so it's always good to kind of conversation starter. Obviously, the story is massive within the game. Um, I was surprised to hear about Mark Wood being a Wimbledon fan because he's from the North East, but fantastic. I love him, so it'd be great. I might reach out to him. <laughs> good stuff. Um, and in terms of where we're at now, we're back home, new stadium, back in the heart of the community, and you know, must be pleased with that. And you've been able to get down and see a few games this season? Yeah, I've been to four or five games this year. Um, over to Plough Lane four times, as well as going over to Arsenal, so that was really cool. Um, seeing them play against such a good team, um, obviously not the result we wanted, but they kind of forced them and played well. Um, I see the best game this year, probably Fleetwood, where it was 2 2, but uh, the boys fought hard and yeah, it's really hopeful for mid table finish, hopefully. Highest ever Wimbledon finish. Absolutely. And we just had the third anniversary, I think, the other night of us beating West Ham in the Cup at the, at the original Cherry Red Record Stadium. Yeah. Great night that, but I mean, now at the new stadium we've got now, hopefully more big nights like that to come, yeah? Of course, yeah, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Kind of giant killing games, but also like getting up and competing with those teams in a few years would be really nice with a good crop of players we've got at the moment. It's uh, certainly exciting times for, for the club. Absolutely. So for yourself now, what's the, what's the plan for the rest of this year with the Athletics? Yeah, I'm going to be building into the summer season, so it'll be competing probably from May to September um, all the way through um, in some 400 hurdles around Europe and uh, hopefully over to, um, once I've, if I can qualify, hopefully over to Oregon for the World Championships and then back to Birmingham for the Commonwealth Games are the big ones really. Um, need to make sure I can qualify first, so get some good times down early season and go from there. Yeah, so it's a packed calendar, and particularly you say those Commonwealth Games in Birmingham, that's going to be special, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be really good. I think I've never experienced that kind of home games atmosphere. Um, it kind of make me feel like what the Wimbledon players feel being back in, being back in Plough Lane. I went to university in Birmingham as well, so it'd be really cool to kind of get out there and uh, experience a home crowd. Absolutely, and you, you just finished off speaking to head coach Mark Robinson there, and you feel you've kind of got that link and that bond now to perhaps come down and see the training a little bit more often, maybe. Absolutely, yeah, I'd love to come back. I mean, it's been a real buzz, and kind of I've learned as as much as hopefully I've uh, passed on to the players as well. So I kind of learned a lot, and kind of will have a real buzz in my training this week as well. So as a result, so yeah. Brilliant, Chris McAllister. We'll be looking out for your progress. Thanks very much for your time. Thanks a lot. Come on, you dons.